of men it seems there's so much we have lost as we look down the road where all the prodigals have walked one by one the enemy has whispered lies and led them off as slaves That you are God, yours is the victory. We know there is more to come that we may not yet see. So, with the faith you've given us, we'll step into the valley unafraid. Plans will 
the tail. Devil never know just where you're going, devil never know just where you'll be tonight. Devil never know just where to find you, devil never know, cause the devil gonna be in flight. If you keep his commandments and you walk in his ways, then he'll bless you and keep you cause you choose to obey. All the earth will respect you cause you're called by his name. All trouble will come, but it will flee seven ways. You'll be blessed in the city, mm, you'll be blessed in the field. All your plans will be fruitful, all your planting will You'll never be the tail. You'll never be the tail. You'll never be the tail. All right. Well, praise the Lord Jesus for the beautiful day he's given us today. Praise the Lord Jesus for the University of South Florida. And we are just thankful to be here. And we recommend that you remember to give your thanksgiving to God, the Lord Jesus, this week. When you're enjoying your time off and your big meal, give your thanks to Jesus. Because the Bible says, he who offers thank offerings honors God and opens the way so that God may show him salvation. So Jesus Professor here, and now we're going to talk about, we're asking the question, are you looking for Jesus? A big part of my job as Jesus professor is looking for those who are looking for Jesus. I don't mean looking for church or for religion. I mean looking for God in the flesh who died for our sins and who rose from the dead. Maybe Jesus has appeared to you in a dream, like he is appearing to many Muslims all over the world. Maybe you're like the ancient Athenians who had an altar to an unknown God and who believed the good news when Paul declared Jesus to them, saying, For God has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to all men, by raising him from the dead. Maybe seeds of faith were planted in your heart some time ago through a song or a Bible verse, but you're still on your journey of looking for Jesus. Who is this Jesus? Jesus is not God Jr. Jesus is not just a wise teacher or a prophet. Jesus is fully God, Yahweh in the flesh. The main ideas can be summarized in the word hands, since Jesus shares the honors, attributes, names, deeds, and seat of God. Some of the honors Jesus receives that demonstrate his deity are honor, glory, worship, prayer, and praise. John chapter 5 tells us that the Father has entrusted all judgment to the Son that all might honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Another honor Jesus receives is glory. Revelation chapter 5 records that there are 100 million angels in heaven singing in a loud voice to Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Worship is another honor due only to God that Jesus receives, thus showing that Jesus is God. For example, after Jesus walked on the water and climbed back into the boat, Matthew 14 records, then those who were in the boat worshiped him. Matthew chapter two records, that Jesus was worshiped at his birth by the wise men. Matthew 28 records that after he rose from the dead, his disciples came to him, clasped his feet, and worshiped him. Prayer is another honor that Jesus asks for 
and receives. In John chapter 14, it records Jesus is telling his followers, you may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. In Acts chapter 7, when Stephen was being stoned, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. In Acts chapter 22, Paul recounts two of his own prayers to our Lord Jesus. Since Jesus asks for and receives prayer, if you are looking for Jesus, ask the Lord Jesus to show himself to you. As he says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. O oh Lord Jesus, reveal yourself to us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
Well, praise the Lord Jesus who gives us life and breath and everything else, including this beautiful day, this nice campus, our educational opportunities, a few days off to celebrate and to give thanks, and usually some good things to eat. Hi, Jesus Professor here, and now we're going to talk about are you running from Jesus? Sometimes we know that Jesus is calling us to follow him, but we're scared and we run away. Maybe we labor under the misunderstanding that following Jesus means attending church or becoming more like those weird Christians we know. Let me assure you that you don't need to be like me to follow Jesus in any other way than following Jesus. Maybe you're running from Jesus because religious people have given you the impression that the Christian life is dour and boring. Maybe you're running from Jesus because you think you need to muster the strength on your own to live how he's calling you to live. Maybe you'd like the forgiveness that Jesus offers, but prefer not to accept the gift of repentance in the package deal. You can run from Jesus, but you can't hide. Romans chapter 14 says that each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. Hebrews chapter 4 tells us that nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. In 1 Peter chapter 4, God says that those who heap abuse on Jesus' followers will have to give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. I suppose you can keep running from the Lord Jesus as long as you live. It's a free country, sort of. But the end of life is not an escape from Jesus. It's an appointment with him. It's a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Scripture tells us of Jesus. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus the Messiah is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So, what do you say? Jesus invites you to stop running. Why not bow the knee today in trust and surrender? Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Is today the day of your salvation? Maybe you're not ready to fully trust and surrender to Jesus today. That's okay. But let me echo Jesus' invitation to stop running. He says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Stop running and start seeking God in these three ways. One, ask and keep on asking Jesus to show himself to you. Kodavan Isa, Isa Kodavan. Two, read the Bible. Start anywhere you like. Matthew, Genesis, Luke, John, Proverbs. Three, find a good Christian radio station and let God speak to you through the music. I've also put together a Seeker Music playlist on our Jesus Professor YouTube channel and you're invited to come and ask questions in our Jesus 101 Facebook group. It's okay to be a seeker, but don't take too long deciding once you taste and see that the Lord is good. Praise the Lord Jesus. Are you past? 
the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Well, let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all its stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't say. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Who can wipe away the tears from broken dreams and wasted years? Tell the past to disappear. Oh. Let me tell you about my Jesus and all the wrong turns that you would go and undo if you could. Who can work it all for your good? Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't say. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Cause his love is strong and his grace is free And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me Let me tell you about my Jesus Let my Jesus change your life my cross to Calvary, pay the price for all my guilty, who would care that much about me? Well, let me tell you about my Jesus, who would take your cross to Calvary, pay the price for all your guilty, who would care that much about you? Well, let me tell you about my Jesus, he makes a way where there ain't no way, rises up from an sinner that he can't say let me tell you about my jesus his love is strong and his grace is free and the good news is i know that he can do for you what he's done for me let me tell you about my jesus let my jesus change your life hallelujah hallelujah Well, praise the Lord Jesus for all of his blessings. Jesus bled for our healing, not just for our forgiveness, but Jesus bled to heal our will so we could follow him. So Jesus professor here, and now we're gonna ask the question, are you a prodigal? With this question, I mean, have you made some beginning with Jesus and yet an honest assessment of your life would show you're not really following Jesus at this stage of your life? Were you raised in a Christian home or perhaps brought to church by grandparents, friends, or relatives so that you had an ample opportunity to know right from wrong and follow Jesus but for some reason, you decided not to keep following. Have you prayed the sinner's prayer or maybe even gotten baptized, but you realize that the character of your life fails to show an ongoing love of Jesus? Sure, there may have been complicating factors like 
overbearing religious people, religious hypocrites, and toxic church situations. I've been on both sides of those deals. If the Holy Spirit is convicting you now that you're a prodigal, I am here today to call you back to follow Jesus. I'm not calling you back to Christian religion. I'm not calling you back to attend church. These are not essential components to following Jesus. Sure, a good church can be helpful if you can find one, but Christ's yoke is easy and his burden is light. Finding a good church is often a heavy burden given the multitude of churches that are mediocre at best. But think back to your baptism, your upbringing, or your initial intent when you resolved to follow Jesus on a previous occasion. As you think back, what positive steps is the Holy Spirit prompting you to take? Odds are that the Holy Spirit is prompting you to open up two-way communication with Jesus by reading and listening to the Bible. This is Jesus talking to you. The Holy Spirit is also inviting you to talk to Jesus in a simple and practical way through prayer. Tell Jesus how you're feeling, what you're thinking, what your cares are. Ask for his help and provision and guidance. Ask Jesus what he wants you to do differently to follow him better. Sit still in prayer and you'll often find that he is whispering to you. And as you begin this dialogue with our Lord Jesus, remember to confess your sins for he says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to purify us from all unrighteousness. Odds are also good that the Holy Spirit is showing you some sins that took you off the narrow path that leads to life and put you on the broader road that leads to destruction. Is it pornography, marijuana, sexual immorality, love of the world, just wanting to be the king or the queen of your own life? Here's the deal. Come back and follow Jesus. Trust and surrender to Jesus. Get water baptized as a reenactment of his death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus has real power in baptism to put to death all those prodigal sins and bring you up out of the water as a new creation, a new person. But here's the other side of the deal. God disciplines those he loves. The prodigal son that Jesus describes in Luke chapter 15 didn't turn around until he hit rock bottom. He was starving, feeding pigs on a farm and longing to fill his belly with the pig food. If you're already at rock bottom, come on back to Jesus. If you're not at rock bottom yet, save yourself the rest of the trip downward and turn back to Jesus now before it gets that bad. Jesus loves you. And if you question whether he will or can accept you as you are, I declare to you today, Isa Kodavan, Kodavan Isa. I declare to you today, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Trust, surrender, and follow. Today can be the day that you turn around. Maybe you're not sure yet. That's okay too. If you're not ready to be a follower of Jesus, then do, do this for me. Take yourself off the path of being a prodigal and become a seeker. In so far as you can, stop running after things that you know are evil. You won't be able to fully repent in your own power, but begin asking Jesus to show you and help you and make a path back home to Jesus. Jesus is slow to anger 
and rich in love. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Another Thanksgiving, just a few days away. So let's make sure that our thanks and our praise go to God for all of our blessings and all the good things that he has provided. Hi, Jesus Professor here. And now we're going to talk about how to move beyond the plowing stage of seeking Jesus. John the Baptist preached to those who were stuck in the plowing stage. He said, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees. And every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Speaking of Jesus, John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water for repentance. After me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. 
we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ for the deeds done in the body, whether good or bad. For God has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to all men by raising Jesus from the dead. So what can we do to better soften our hearts to respond to Jesus today? One, ask for God's help. Simply pray something like, Lord, my heart is hard. Please help me break up the soil of my heart so that the seed of your word can be planted and bear good fruit. Two, spend time in God's word. Scripture tells us that the law is the schoolmaster that brings us to Jesus. Three, complain less and thank God more for what he has provided for us since scripture says, he who offers thank offerings honors God and prepares the way that God may show him his salvation. Four, be more like Cornelius who gave regularly to the poor. Five, do your work willingly and ask for God's help. Hey, aren't final exams coming up here? Y'all can pray, ask Jesus for help as you complete your exams, your projects, and your other work. The thorns and thistles, the challenges of our natural work of earning our daily bread, these were designed by God as redemptive disciplines to turn our heart toward Him so that we'd ask Him for help. As we ask God for help in our work, God softens our hearts to help us see that Jesus' yoke is easy and his burden is light. The Lord Jesus can change your heart. Praise the Lord Jesus. Born again. 
a mercy killing The man I used to be has finally died Got Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in you. Let me let me tune real quick. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is my Lord, Son of God and the Christ. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is my Lord, Son of God and the Christ. And Jesus died and rose again so that I could have life and he loves me Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is Yahweh who made the heavens and the earth Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is Yahweh who made the heavens and the earth and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead I will be saved. Jesus, 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 Jesus is the Lord who will return for his own. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is the Lord who will return for his own. He will repay every man for his deeds on the earth, both good and bad. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is my Lord, Son of God and the Christ. And Jesus died and rose again so that I could have life. And he loves me. And he loves you too. All right, well, praise the Lord Jesus for this beautiful campus and this beautiful day. Praise the Lord Jesus for bringing us here to the University of South Florida. I hope you feel the same way. So in, now I'm gonna talk about, cause I'm the Jesus professor, and I'm gonna talk about five keys to college success. Jesus cares about your college success. In the Bible, Jesus has given us five keys to success that have worked in my own life. One, the first key to college success is to ask Jesus for help. Life and work can be very challenging, and this certainly includes college. This is because when man sinned, God made work harder, saying, by the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. The difficulties we face in college are the thorns and thistles that God announced as redemptive disciplines to turn our hearts back to him by asking for help. Jesus says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. When Jesus teaches us to pray, we ask, give us today our daily bread. The ability to succeed in our college work is part of your daily bread. Ask Jesus for help. The second key to college success is to find self-control. College success is a full-time job. Depending on your major and personal strength, this means 40 to 60 hours every week of consistent effort beginning now. If internet gaming, booze, drugs, porn, or hanging out with the wrong group of friends is distracting you from the required efforts to succeed, you're setting yourself up for a mountain of debt rather than college success. Confess those self-control problems to Jesus and ask him for his help. 
since scripture says, everyone who sins is a slave to sin, but if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. The third key to college success is to honor your father and your mother. Do not use college as an escape from parental boundaries. Scripture tells us to honor and obey our parents, saying, for this is right, and this is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. The fourth key to college success is to honor your teachers. You don't have to like them, but to receive God's blessing through your teachers, you need to attend your classes, follow their instructions, and do the required work. The Bible warns, at the end of your life you will groan. When your flesh and body are spent, you will say, how I hated discipline, how my heart spurned correction. I would not obey my teachers or listen to my instructors. I have come to the brink of utter ruin. When you do the math, the tuition here comes out to a little, of, little over $14 for each one hour class, which is more than a movie ticket. And this is the in-state tuition. If you're paying out-of-state tuition, you're paying over $40 for each one hour class. It's unrealistic to blame your professors for the lack of learning and added value if you're not doing all of the assigned work and following their guidance within the scope of their course. The fifth key to college success is to hang out with friends and peers with similar goals and lifestyles that also promote success. You've probably heard the Bible verse that says, bad company corrupts good character. Scripture also says that the companion of fools suffers harm. Remember that the promises, remember the promises of Scripture that all things are possible with God and I can do all three things through Jesus who gives me strength. This includes success in the most challenging college majors and courses, engineering, physics, calculus, and chemistry. I was a physics major myself. The Lord Jesus brought me through. I believe with all my heart that you, you can succeed by following the above advice. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to attend college. We thank you for the books and the finances and the professors. We thank you for your blessing on us to be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. We thank you for your hand of discipline intended to move us to ask for your help every day. Lord Jesus, help us. Lighten our yoke and help us to overcome the thorns and thistles as we earn our daily bread. Help us to honor our father and mother through our college years so that it may go well with us. Give us the self-control we need to spend 40 or to 60 hours each week in honest, undistracted effort, free from porn, excessive gaming, drug use, or excessive alcohol. Help us to honor our teachers and complete our assignments without sloth, complaint, or procrastination. Help us to make proportional progress through each course. Lord Jesus, prune our peer groups of bad influence. Bring us good friends and help us to likewise influence our friends and peers in what is good. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Praise the Lord Jesus for letting us be here today. I'm Jesus Professor. I have a Jesus Professor YouTube channel and Jesus 101 Facebook group if you have any questions. Praise the Lord Jesus.